G'day young farming champions and welcome to another edition of our Leadership is Language series. I'm Mandy McKeesick and I'm your host for tonight. Many of you may know me by name only as that journo chick who writes the stories and the blogs for Pitch You in Agriculture and sends you emails from time to time bugging you with more questions. And believe me, I've got a dossier on most of you at the moment. But because I work out here in central Queensland on a beef property, I don't actually get around to seeing many of you face to face. So after tonight, a lot of you are going to be one up on me. So that's great. But as a freelance writer and photographer, I'm usually quite comfortable interviewing people, preferably out in the field where I can see them working or over the phone. This is actually the first time I have been videoed while I've been working. But to make that task a little easier tonight, I'm joined by the wonderful Emma Aleph. Now, Em, I've been writing about Em for quite a few years, so I can tell you she grew up tailing wild merinos in the rainlands of South Australia. She then went to the University of Adelaide, where she graduated with a Bachelor of Agricultural Science, and her first job was in Western New South Wales on the salt, oh, sorry, on the lake bed farms of Tando Limited, where she was working with cotton growing, I believe, and not only designing research projects, but executing them. She must have made an impression pretty early on because in 2015, she was headhunted by a bloke called Heath McQuirter in Elders in Griffith. And 14 months after that happened, now, let this sink in, 14 months after she's been headhunted and had a role created especially for her, she and Heath branched out on their own to form Summit Ag, Summit Ag, a consultancy agricultural business. So it's been a bit of a ride. It's been a bit of a ride, but the one thing that Emma's kept front of mind throughout her career is her client. She is just as happy in a paddock talking to some old bloke to convince him to use new technology as she is forming a brand new group for young farmers. So with all that in mind, welcome Emma. Thank you so much for the kind introduction. Oh, welcome. Well, let's dive into this straight away. We all know that one of the keys to good leadership is knowing your customer. In my case, that's knowing my audience. Who am I writing for? What's the publication? Who are the readers? In your case, it's probably your clients. So can you give us some tips and tricks? How do you go from talking to that old bloke in the paddock to say a researcher who's, whose work you've got to convert to the practical or even to a university student who might want to become a young farming champion? How do you, how do you swap between those? Oh, look, it's a challenge. It really is. Um, and it's something that I think it takes time and experience. You've got to go and have the conversation with the um, older cocky in the paddock. You've got to go and have a go at speaking with the researchers and, and get it wrong. That's really how you learn. Um, but it's about understanding exactly the same as for you, your, your client or your customer that you're working with. So um, when you're working with different farmers, trying to um, start out when you first start working with them, asking questions to understand them, understand their attitude towards risk, what their goals are and what they're trying to achieve. Um, and then building that rapport that allows you to have a conversation with them in a manner that is going to um, resonate with them and, and get them to sit up and listen. And sometimes you can do that in a matter of weeks or months and sometimes it can take you over a year um, to get to that position where you can actually start having those really meaningful conversations, either through um, building trust or, or proving yourself. And then the same with the researchers, it's about understanding them and what they're doing, understanding their level of knowledge, um, of what actually happens on the ground and then being able to change the language that you use uh, and the way that you speak uh, so that it resonates with them and, and what they're doing. Okay, Em, so you and Heath have taken that understanding of communication and you've developed an app called Yakka to connect farmers. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. So um, communication is, is everything, whether that's grower to grower, whether that's consultant to client, whether it's researcher to end user. Um, Heath and I spend a lot of time on the road, which means we end up on the phone a lot. 
I made 47 phone calls yesterday to give you an example of the amount of time I spend on the phone. Um, so it is the amazing the amount of time that we play phone tag or that we're trying to really lock down a researcher or a client to have a meaningful conversation. So the point of Yaka is about identifying when you have free time to have a meaningful conversation. So for me, that might be when I'm in the car for a farmer, that might be when they're sitting in a tractor or a header. Um, for you know, a livestock person that lives on a station, that might be when they jump in the car and head into town. So you can create networks on it, which allow you to put friends, colleagues, um, and key contacts so that you can see um, who's online and free for a chat when you are. But it also allows you to extend beyond your immediate network. So as part of Yaka, we wanted to try and bring um, agricultural communities together. So both within and between industries and behind and beyond the farm gate. So, you know, whether you're an industry person or um, a researcher or maybe an ag teacher at the local school, you can have a profile on Yaka. And then you can put in a discussion point or a key interest and it'll help to connect you with people that maybe could answer your question that someone in your network can't or just connect you with people with similar interests to you that you might be able to have some really meaningful and useful conversations with um, to, to build your knowledge base and, and your network. Okay, well, well that sounds really good, but I suppose one of the arguments would be that these days there's a, there's a plethora of ways we communicate and uh, texting and social media are two of the biggest ways. But Yaka wants to take us back to the phone. Why, why is that important and how can we communicate over the phone perhaps better than we can in some of these other ways? Um, it is a lot easier to convey tone and sentiment using voice than it is um, using text. So I'm sure that uh, everyone's probably received an email that they've read and gone, oh, that's come across a bit blunt or a bit rude. I wonder if they meant that or you've sent an email and got a negative reaction because of the way that you've written the words. Um, in your mind, didn't sound harsh or blunt, but for the person reading it, they've interpreted it uh, quite differently. So it is, um, it's a, yeah, you're a lot, lot um, better at conveying what you actually mean and putting sentiment behind words if you speak um, with your pitch and the, the, the way that you say it. Um, it also takes away that aspect of the, the keyboard warrior, for want of a better term. So it's a lot harder to be nasty to someone um, through the phone and speaking to them than it is sitting behind a keyboard just typing out a few words. So we feel that that um, takes away a lot of that angst around posting a question and having a discussion because people just genu generally will be a lot um, nicer. We also know uh, we did a lot of research before we started building Yaka and we went through our client base. So out of our 75 key clients, and we compared what we were trying to do to Twitter as an agricultural based platform, I guess. Um, so only 30% of those guys actually had a Twitter account and of them only 5% were active. So when we went in, uh, majority of what they were doing was just re retweets. There wasn't a lot of organic um, or new content being put up or discussions had. So we asked a few of our guys, Oh, like why why aren't you on Twitter or why do you have Twitter and, and you don't involve yourself in the conversation? And for a lot of those guys, it was being nervous about putting questions and ideas out on an open platform like that, where people can start that chain attack if they don't agree with you um, behind the keyboard. But also just mm. things like, you know, if you're driving a car, you can't text back on Twitter. So you drive two hours you miss two hours of text conversation and you've got to trawl back through, you know, all the chains of the previous tweets and try and work out where you're up to. And, and it just kind of um, was almost a too hard basket for a lot of these guys, whereas um, farmers love a yak. So if they can pick the phone up and call that person, uh, they, <laughs> they, um, they love it. And they are able to build a lot more personalised relationship with someone. Again, that comes back to really knowing your customer and your client. You've really identified 
what they need and you've provided something for them. Well, that's right. That's that's exactly uh, what we've done. And, and we think that like Yakka and what we're trying to do is a whole cultural shift and change, um, particularly my generation. We've fairly well grown up with platforms like MSN Messenger, MySpace, right through to Facebook and Twitter. Um, so, so we're going to have to really retrain people to be comfortable in picking up the phone and making a phone call, which can be quite daunting. And, and for us, it's about how do we set this up to open people up to have communication and, and to make that call without feeling nervous um, because you're ringing someone you don't really know. Uh, that's some really good points there about retraining people to talk on the phone again. And I can see Yaka having different applications. Like for myself in my work, one of the worst things I have to do is cold call somebody for a story. But with Yakka, it, it's easy for me to put a question up there. And if there's people that have an interest or want to talk about it, they can reach out to me. Or alternatively, I can see people on Yakka who, who are up for Yak, and I can give them a call and say, hey, I'm from Yakka. And it just breaks down those barriers straight away. So yeah, for me and my line of work, I can see it working. I can see it for the farmers. And you probably touched on this a little bit, how it can help the younger people. But for a young farming champion, how could they use Yakka? I think there's heaps of applications um, right through our career journey with Yakka. So, you know, at uni, trying to find work experience, you know, why not, why not connect and call, you know, a farmer or an agronomist um, and line it up? Or if you need help with an assignment, you know, you could post your discussion point up there, like, oh, I'm trying to do an assignment on this in soils and, and you know, some agronomists out there, we love sharing what we know. So they'd probably ring you in and have a fantastic conversation. Um, when you first leave uni and you start a new job, you've got, it's a steep learning curve. So what better way to uh, prepare yourself and, and arm yourself with a wealth of knowledge than having a network of amazing people behind you that you can post questions and get people to ring to help fill in knowledge gaps or, or even create relationships with people in the same industries with, um, you know, with more experience that you can reach out to and feel comfortable with having a yap about, you know, whatever's happening. So I think it's got a great, great fit there industry wise, also connecting uh, with industry researchers and people beyond the farm gate that can help you in whatever role you're undertaking. But then from like our Young Farming Champs perspective, it would be great to see teachers jump on this platform, you know, and then we can facilitate connection between teachers in different schools teaching ag or maybe other subjects assisting with them with their knowledge and, and helping to spread um, the realities of, of agriculture and and all the great things that we're doing out here. Yeah, and I guess that's a that's another really good point about Yakka is it's offering that real world connection straight to the farmer or the agronomist. And yes, for a student or a teacher, just to have that immediate connection is something we've been aiming for with Picture You and Agriculture. So I can see Yakka as, as a great fit. Uh, going forward into the future, what are your plans for Yakka? Um, so Yaka is at the moment very much a love child. So a lot of what Heath and I are doing at the moment are working with um, what we're calling foundational or seed sponsors. So working with well-known agricultural businesses um, to help raise capital as our Yaka 2.0 build um, starts this week. Um, and anyone who's had anything to do with building apps or anything like that knows it's a lot more expensive than you were initially budget on. Um, so that's where we're at in the short term is about creating those relationships with industry, um, trying to get the industry experts onto the platform to enable some of the tough questions to be answered and to build a community Hopefully our goal is a thousand people by the end of the year. At the moment, we're sitting just above 250 people in six weeks. So we're really, really excited and happy with where we've got to, but we've got a lot of work to do going forward in um, creating some supporting stuff to go with Yaka. Like we said, it's, it's a whole change in the way that you think about using social media and use your phone for a lot of people. Um, 
So doing that, uh, working with these seed um, and foundational sponsors to get them on board. And then it's about just trying to build this thing to be the dream of having that open communication platform. Oh, look, that, that sounds excellent. And I, I'm happy to say that I'm one of the ones on Yakka already. And if there's young farming champions out there that would like to join all what we're doing, jump onto the website, www.yakka.com.au to find out a bit more information. And then um, get the free app, download the free app and see what all the fuss is about. Um, be one of those, be one like me and those other 250, we're in on the ground floor on something pretty exciting here. Excellent. All right. Well, before we sign off for the night, let's, let's sum this up. Can you leave us with three simple messages or three simple take home messages that we, how we can use language on our leadership journeys? I think that it's really important to be sympathetic and or empathetic of the other person's views that you're working with or talking to in every situation. It's particularly important to be um, sympathetic and empathetic in difficult conversations. It's important to do the work before you go into those conversations so that you can um, kind of see things through their eyes and kind of prepare yourself for, you know, what the potential reactions could be and, and think about the best way to craft the conversation. I know this is something that I am certainly not an expert on, but it is something that I've been working really, really hard on um, doing some further reading and research on. So a great book um, is uh, Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's got some great examples and it's a real eye opener. Second thing is never underestimate who is watching or listening to you um, and who you might be leading from the sidelines. Um, and, and don't forget to look across because sometimes they're people on the same level as you. They're not always people coming up the ranks behind you. So it's always mindful when you have conversations <clears throat> or talk to people or reach out to people that you think about who else around might be watching and learning from what you're doing and who you're setting an example for. Um, and acknowledge to yourself um, and to anyone around you when you stuff it up because you, ine you inevitably will, but your best learnings always come from when you stuff it up. And my probably third big thing is never speak your frustration or anger, no matter how frustrated or angry you get. Um, so it's very easy to get caught up in the heat of the moment because you've got the shits on with someone and write a nasty email or say something uh, that can be taken out of context particularly when you are typing because it can quite easily be taken out of context. Um, so just, just really think about, um, think about what you're doing. My favourite trick when I am annoyed with someone is I write them an email and tell them what I think. I never put a to address in. I stick it in my uh, drafts folder and I look at it again the next day. And it, it's amazing just even with 24 hours of separation or even 12 hours of separation, to walk away and take a breath. You get it off your chest, you get it out on a piece, out onto a piece of paper and out into the email so you feel better, but then you come back and read it and you just think, God, I'm so bloody glad I did not hit send on that. <laughs> I agree. Step away from that computer at times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And everything, everything gets softer with time. Remember that. So whether it's you've stuffed up and someone's got the shits with you or or someone else has stuffed up and you've got the shits on with them, if you can put some time and space between the event and between the individuals, it, it, it inevitably calms down over time. I think that probably wraps us up for the night, Young Farming Champions. We'll get off here while our internets are still half usable. Thanks for tuning in. It's been a great night and uh, I'll be in touch soon to, with some more questions to add to those dossiers. Thanks very much, Em. Thank you. Good night.